there and what's not there. It's fake. Yeah. That's how you could do that. That's why I'm sitting here saying, why would 49 people not say, oh, clearly we're in the pandemic. Clearly we see what's happening with the economy, people's lives, people not eating jobs, which we're going to get into right now because we're live on the show about tomorrow. Welcome, beautiful people of Baltimore. It's the show about tomorrow. Demel Brunson here with Easy Jackson. Yes, sir. Good to see everybody. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's keeping safe, keeping keeping blessed, keeping focused. And uh, the show about tomorrow, man, as we always say, we're here to discuss the future of the Black family in Baltimore uh, and how other things surrounding uh, our city in Baltimore, our state legislation, uh, federal government, but also cultural movements affect the people that live in the city of Baltimore. And if you tune in, we just were having a uh, pre pre uh, sh show talk about the the 50 49 vote that the Senate just passed the 1.9 trillion dollar COVID relief plan. And uh, our guest today, Mr. Dominic Nell Farmer Nell in the house. We were just talking. Tell us what you were just saying before we get into city weeds and and be more green and everything you're building out there in the community on North and Pulaski. Let's just rock with the energy that we had before the show went live about this 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 fake money. Yeah, man. I was I was uh, I was uh, leading with like you know where's the money coming from? It's like it's all these stimulus packages. It's, you know, money everywhere. It's like unlimited money and you know, you have cyber money, you have Bitcoin and you have the stocks. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we were speaking of the 50, 49 vote, 51, 49 vote. It was like, that's theatrics to me, in my opinion, because of the whole makeup of it is not based off the value or even the wealth anymore. It's based off of those, for me, it's based off of those that uh, have wealth, basically being able to keep their wealth. So giving some crumbs and some bones to, you know, those that are along the wayside actually keeps them afloat. You know what I'm saying? Because they figure that, you know, we're going to spend it or, you know, the, the consumers is going to consume it and this is going to go from there. Yeah. Yeah. What you think, Easy? Yeah. I mean, I think it's wild. Like we know, we've known and watched this for, you know, a long time. It's like this political football with people's livelihoods. It's just such a odd, you know, thing to watch but you know we out here we all got to get it the best way we can you know um unfortunately you can't depend on the government uh you know even at times like this when you know people are losing jobs and some some you know close to losing their homes haven't already lost their homes uh and to just the, just a the mere fact that we have to sit and wait for these people to vote uh, in order to get some relief is just yeah. insane and we not only that we had to wait, but like you said, no, we got the theatrics of it, which I like that is 49 of y'all voted against it. Yeah. So yeah. why? You know what I'm saying? What's the logic behind that when you see what's happened in the community and on Wall Street? Did you see the one senator? Um I forget her name, but she uh when she went to give her a vote. She had on like a cute little uh, schoolgirl type dress or something. And and she walked up to the thing like that. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, so apparently, and she's supposed to be a Democrat, a Democrat. So right. um, the white liberals are going crazy telling, telling them, you know, telling her they're going to vote against her the next time around and all that. But you know, it's the rich versus the poor, like it's always been. And what's the and what's the emotional connection on a theatrics, gentlemen, as far as like, why am I even giving you all the theatrics about voting it down when it's all we're gonna do is print more money. Right. We're just printing it to put it back into circulation and send it to the people who supposedly need it the most. And right. it's supposed to help. So why would someone have a split down the party lines where there's folks on both sides arguing something like this still while we're trying to get folks vaccinated, get kids back to school fully, you know, it's interesting and thinking about, you know, folks that are connected to communities and interesting 
you know, that this bill is being passed right now, you now while we have you as our guest, because you've been doing, you know, major work, man, major work, bro, in the community, you know, with, with business, economics, uh, you know, urban farming, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your mission and your vision for uh, City Weeds and, you know, Be More Green and, you know, what you guys are, are, are really, you know, doing for the city of Baltimore. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, you know, I'm just happy to be here, for one, you know, thankful for still being in, you know, the general conversation of Baltimore, because like anywhere else, um, cities and with the time that we're living in, things are pretty much trendy, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I felt like <clears throat> I was getting, um, there was a level of lackluster that was going on because I felt um, defeated or even tired in a lot of ways from the mission. And <clears throat> the mission of City Weeds in general is just planting seeds of independence and thrivability. Like even changing the whole language that we're using because sustainability gets thrown out there so much as the goal, you know, the ceiling of what we're looking for. And it's actually the floor. It's like, that's where we need to start. We need to start at a sustainable level in order to thrive, like kind of segueing into where, where the wealth disparity conversation yeah. and uh, the theatrics attached to that. Um, and so the Be More Green mission is an extension of City Weeds. It's the community base, um, the youth programming. And so now <clears throat> by us having um, a brick and mortar here on North and Pulaski, it, um, it really puts us in a space where I can uh, really see the work being done. It was before I was like a novelty and a pop-up. And even in a lot of ways, I still feel like I'm being received as that. But just the push of being make, of making this a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, defining what a, uh, uh, redefining the corner store, redefining yeah. the corner. Um, you know what I mean? It was just, the equation that I'm using isn't something that is, um, you know, you new or unique. Um, it's actually, you know, what I've seen growing up, like products being pushed on the corner through a corner store in front of a corner store so on and so forth. So I'm taking the same approach with like pushing, giving out fresh food, giving out teas of the, of eggplants and, you know, samples, you know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah. And, changing what would be inside that corner store and who is behind the counter and, you know, changing the narrative or more so even getting away from changing the narrative, but actually controlling the narrative. We got a piece of something right now. So we're able to actually have some control and, yeah. you know, promote the ownership of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, Nell, I've known you for a long time, bro. And, um, and I've seen you, you know what I mean? go from, you know, one level to where you're at now. Um, I wanted you to talk a little bit about the beginning of your health journey because, you know, I, I feel like that's where this all kind of stemmed from, right? Like, like you, 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 you practice, you, you do very well, like you eat very healthy, very clean. We've talked about it many times. Um, and, and, and a lot of this is encouraging that in the community. Um, tell me where that started from. Where was that? What was the moment where you say, yo, you know what? I got to, I got to do better. Um, that started as a, at a small age. Um, pardon me, we got work going on here at uh, the store. Um, and where he is, guys, just for those who are watching, he's at North and Pulaski right now. North and Pulaski, be more green. That's where the, that's where the spot is. Yes, sir. So we don't have anything going on today. Um, we do give out the food on the, on Fridays, and we will have. I help set that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, as far as like at the twelve o'clock, so normally around two o'clock on Friday, we'll probably be doing the close. It's right here, easy because people coming in right now. They want they yeah. the work the work is happening right now. No, that's the day on Friday. Live. Live. <laughs> live, live and living color. It's like you, one color. thing to have. It's one thing to have somebody talk about what they want. It's yeah, another yeah. thing to see them. That's right. In action. In action. Why they doing it? Had to put his mask on. I love that. I, mean, I appreciate you. Man. You know what I'm saying? It's like every. It's happening right there in the moment. 
Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, no, that's good, man. That's that's powerful. Yeah, and then, I mean that's what we want to be. We want to um want to be a beacon of for the community, by the community. Um, what was the uh? We were talking about how we were talking about how it all started for you, like oh, like yeah, the health, the health, the health, 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 health. But now, where did it start for now? Yeah, for me, it started as being just a, um just a sickly child or quote unquote sickly child born allergic to milk and mm. nut allergies. And so when, from like the age that I, that I could read, I was always looking at the ingredients or something, making sure it didn't have something that I was allergic to. Wow. And, and so it kind of started from there. And then I saw the different development in like my, my counterparts, <clears throat> my friends growing up um, that drank a lot of milk, they were actually stronger. And, you know, I was, like a little smaller and frail and I had asthma because it was still certain products I was putting in my body. It wasn't until I got to high school and started playing sports and things changed with the diet. I was able to see how different things affected my body and, and how I had control of that. So, um, so we're talking about, you know, over 20 years ago, as far as like a lifestyle change, I was like, all right, you know, once I learned that, it takes, um, you know, like 30, 30 days to digest one ounce of ground beef or ground animal, period. You know, I was like, I'm a mathematician. I started like doing the math. I was like, wow, if you eat a quarter pounder, that's in your body for like four months. Um, and so those things made sense to me. I had from a 17, from age 17 to 19, I really made those lifestyle changes. And then what happened was I went to school in North Carolina and they use every part of the animal, pig and everything. So being able to see like things up front and and seeing the difference in just thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like how somebody could be physically stronger, but like their brain wasn't developed as, you know, and I'm and this isn't a knock. This is just a just an observation, like from a college yeah. student, like what you know, being a young college student, I was 17, so I was in early. So and those are that are there 19 and physically stronger and all of that. And, you know, my, you know, things were just quicker and faster. So things just became more streamlined, like how everything is streaming now. That's kind of how I wanted to think then. I didn't want to have to be concerned about the health issues. I was able to connect it to historical diets and geographical areas of where you came from. And I understand culture and all, and there was so many components to it that, um, you know, it started there and it kept going there. And then for years, it was just something that was just my lifestyle. In the whole farmer now, um, when I was creating that, that was more of an outdoor, indoor farming thing that I kind of incorporated my healthy lifestyle into it, which was like be more green. Mm -hmm. So it was like I was kind of sneaking all the stuff that people weren't listening to for years. Like, all right, well, let me slide these rhymes in again. You know what I'm saying? Those yeah. bars from back in the day, let me throw them in. They like me now, so you know they like my hooks. So let me throw these old bars in there. So that's kind of how like um, that whole modality came to be. Yeah, nice. nice. I, I love when you said, brother. I love when you said redefining the corner store. That 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 impacted me. That hit that hit me uh, in the gut just now, just to hear you say that because growing up in the inner city of Baltimore, for me, I mean, corner store, you know, that's. That's a, I remember when I first was allowed to walk to the corner store by myself, yeah. you know, and, and how that felt and being wow. and how it felt to get money, 50 cent a dollar, whatever, because you could, I mean, you didn't get lemon heads, go get my lemon heads, my, my, my Boston baked beans, my red hot Uts potato chips, my little Huggies juice, you know, yeah, that was now ladies. now ladies, my penny candy, you know, my sour patch kids. And so it was like, you know, that was the that was a normal thing. Daily school, even in before school, after school, on the court playing ball, whatever, you know, it was always about the corner store. And then for the older cats, that corner store, of course, the cut rate, as we call it, you know, yeah. that 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 ideal of the cut rate to get your look, get your cigarettes, you know, walking in with my pop. I always wanted to get asking for a slim gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wanted a slim gym. I was a slim gym pork rhymes kid as a before before our family stopped eating beef and pork. So tell us about your, your you know, what you're saying about redefining, because, you know, it sounds beautiful to hear, especially in a city like Baltimore, the Be More Green movement is uh, 
something that must be, you know, lifted? Um, yeah, like just going back to my corner store experiences or like, you know, getting your own little cash, you got your five dollars and like, wow, I could do so much with it. That was my way of being able to get access to the stuff that I couldn't eat <clears throat> at home. You know what I mean? Like I grew up with my grandmother. So like none of that stuff was going on. I grew up off a of raisin brand, like whatever she ate, that's what <laughs> I ate. You know what I mean? So, um, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Um, we had a garden out back and that, I can't say that that didn't influence um, farmer now. But the old corner store is like, when I really broke down the demographics, that was our first process of experiencing drugs on the level of sugar and, and just mm. things that we got addicted to. And yeah. so it got a process of, of buying something that was going to give us that fix. And then right outside, more than likely, there was the adult version of that being sold, the illegal yep. version of that being sold, that we yep. were able to, that the corner store was a beacon for all of that. And then those corner stores, like the whole demographic of the neighborhood changed with that. Who owns them now? Um, where do they come from? What are they giving back to the community? So yeah. that's we don't see in our community. So um, it's interesting that taking this stance is getting like a, and don't get it twisted. Um, the exposure is necessary, but that, you know, a black man in a black neighborhood, you know, starting a, a healthy corner store is like a huge story like, or like some superhero type of deal. Um, when all actuality, we're just getting back to square one of where we started from, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just, yeah. just talking about in, in inner cities, you know, in our little villages and neighborhoods. Um, that's how I look at it, you know what I mean? So um, why not start there? Um, <clears throat> I'm operating as if I'm a nonprofit because I'm not making any money, but I am an LLC. Um, right. Because we live in a capitalistic nature, so why not make money off of this? You know what I'm saying? I've seen the money being made off death and despair. Why not make money off of health and wellness? You know what I mean? True. We're laying the game down first, not coming out here like <clears throat> that's why it's not um currently moving as fast as I would like it to move according to the business plan, the business model, the vision the hype that comes with Farmer Nell and City Weeds from the Red Bull programs, the Kaiser Permanente Social Innovation Challenge, the John Hopkins, this, all of these decorative things, as well as the grassroots community work, you know, the work with the living well, you know what I'm saying? The work <clears throat> with Easy Jackson that we've done, you know what I'm saying? Like off the record, just straight up helping families, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, adding all of that together and just wanting it to, that to be contagious, wanting that to be the Baltimore bug or the next thing, like the Reebok classics or the Air Force Ones or polo yeah. shirts or Nautica shirts or now, you know, shell toes or whatever was the trend that Baltimore then took it and played it out. Let's play this Be More Green in, this, in the city weeds uh, out to the point of not playing it out, but just making it mainstream, like make it our Nike check, you know what I'm saying? And, and other brands get to come with it. So the design for Saturdays is just for this to be a vendor's market. So we want to have local vendors in here that this is be more green is the communities. This is yours. This is, this is everybody's. This is, you know, from Baltimore, from Baltimore with love, you know, I want everybody's products to be on these empty shelves back here. So that's why I have it facing this. So people can see that I can easily plug into the, the lexicon that I've of people that I've met along the way and, and just have a store. Yeah, I want this to be ours, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel? You feel me? Like, like yeah. on some? Yeah, you, you feel me? Like, like literally, yeah. like to the point where I, I want this little corner. This the little city weeds corner in the Be More Green store. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is for everybody else, man. This is for us, and then we move on to the next one. Like, this is the model to, to base it off. The next one, not to say it has to be a bunch of Be More Greens, but why not make Be More Green seven of them? The next Seven Eleven. Why not make mm -hmm. uh, City Weeds the next McDonald's? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far mm -hmm. as a brand is concerned, you know what I mean? Totally, totally. Because you yeah. can you can start raising a generation instead of you know it being red dot number five. It's apples, beets, and pomegranates, and yeah. other you know what I'm saying that that really have nutrients. And what you touched me with was the the brain development thing. Thinking about your story or your revelation or your epiphany down in North Carolina of how sharp you felt like you were versus possibly other people who were not putting 
the type of nutrients and, and vitamins into them. And that's, I mean, that's, tr that's traceable. That's not just, you know, we, we know, first of all, that none of our decision-making parts of our brains are fully developed till we're 25. And so up until that point, what we smoke, what we drink, what we eat regularly is definitely causing consequence, whether on the positive or the not so positive, what we're putting in our body, it, it impacts us. And so, to, you know, I'm thinking about before we shoot it back to easy, I just want you want to get from you. What do you see this meaning for the young people in Baltimore? What's, 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 your, what's your thought process around how city weeds, how be more green, how the movement, how the mission can impact the young people in Baltimore City? <clears throat> um, a few years ago, I did a, um, I was part of a, a program called Watch Me Grow, and it was at Marianne Winterling uh, Elementary in Southwest Baltimore. Yeah. And, um, Long story short, there was a youth in there. He was around 16. He had um, a lot of tattoo decorations on his face, and he was very um, um, hood fraternity orientated. And so in that, in him, me just teaching him how to plant, it was kind of like a quick mission. It wasn't anything of like, it wasn't anything that I, that I thought was spectacular from what other things that I've done. So it was just some basic planting seeds and, you know, growing stuff and then replanting certain things. Um, I didn't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with him. He just would watch me, watch what I would do, and he would work autonomously, and then I would maybe give him one or two directives, and that would be it. And then he just started working on his own. Long story short is his testimony after that program was he said he learned the value of life through that mm. pro program. Mm. Like, you're taking something from a seed and having to cultivate it and take care of it. And then like tell the younger kids, don't walk over here. Don't put trash over here. Like it literally like it almost brings tears to my eyes again, because that was like, that's like, that's the mission. Like that, that is the mission. There's so many components attached to it, but the mission is like, you know, the value of life, because that's when we talk about the trauma of what, what we're all dealing with throughout the city on multiple levels. Um, the work that Baltimore ceasefire does is so so pertinent because it has us focus on like what this cycle of life is. We've become so, a lot of us have become so numb and so used to this status quo of 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 that's not reality. That's not a healthy lifestyle. So in a in the in inner healthiness is the outward healthiness. So be more clean and be more green. It's like clean yourself up first. That's hygiene, and also cleaning up your environment, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What your eyes see, you know what I'm saying? Like, which, yeah. which, you know what I'm saying? Me, my environment, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, like, okay, those things make us, make up, all those components make up. So the Farmer Now City Weeds mission is multi-dimensional. It's focusing on the area that that's, doesn't get a lot of focus, which is the food injustices and how that's not connected to behavior with youth. Um, how they perform in school. Yeah. By me, my teach, I teach high school agriculture. So I'm able to see kids coming in there with the Red Bull and the Triple Animals breakfast sandwich. And I always refer to it as that, you know what I'm saying? The McTrash um, Red Bull, it, you know, it literally comes from a bull. I told them they had to look up taurine. So whenever they were coming with products that I didn't approve of, I couldn't make them not consume it, but they would have to write down the ingredients of it and tell me what they're putting inside their body and explain uh -huh. that to me. And uh -huh. then so when they're going to sleep or they're, they're amped up, they know why. Or like, okay, the apples that the oranges that they're playing basketball with at lunch. I said, no, we're not going to do that. I'm going to go, I'm going to collect them all. I'm going to put them in my refrigerator downstairs in the classroom and I'm going to make juice and smoothies out of them the next day that y'all are going to be fiending over. Or some of them will come in the morning like, farmer, now you got something to eat. So now that fruit, they're feeding for the energy that, that now they're relating that that's energy as opposed to eating dead animals. And how is that going to fuel a body to think in the morning? This isn't like a vegan mission. This is just using just common knowledges that we overlook every day. Yeah. Putting acid with the coffee, the caffeine. Kids are drinking that cold version. They're going to 7-Eleven and Royal Farms and then coming to school. 
And then now I got them first and second period. So I'm like, all right, I got to bring my, my juicer in here. I got to bring my uh, my smoothie in here. I got to bring the sea moss and we're going to do it together. The lesson right. is what we're putting in the smoothie. You tell me what it is. And then now do you want to taste it? You know what I'm saying? And so that's addressing the youth is like giving them real life experiences. The same way brothers pushed products on the corner and showed youth how to bag up and cook up and all of that stuff. It's the same approach. We, if you teach... You're teaching them young because yeah. they might not it might not kick into them until five or ten years later but the seed was planted they they know what they can do to be independent for themselves they know what they can do once they get sick or ill oh you know farmer no says or oh, that farmer dude they don't even have to remember my name like farmer yeah. yo you know what i'm saying something says oh, something yeah. about ginger man i'm gonna go get some ginger you know what i'm saying so yeah, right. that's the, that's the legacy of trail that you know i want to get left with this if winning However, however it turns out, put it like that. One hundred percent. Yeah, man, it's wild. Um, just even the fact that you are doing, you know, you got the corner store model. I'm sitting here listening to you, and I'm thinking about how it's wild that we don't have black-owned corner stores in our communities, but we used to. You know what I mean? I, I know, I know when my when our parents' generation was coming up, my mother talked a lot about. Uh, you know, the corner stores where she got her first job, the supermarket in her neighborhood that was black owned, you know, um, and you just don't see that anymore. Um, so I think, what do you, I, I guess my question is, what do you think is the best way to go about, you know, duplicating what you're doing? I mean, I know starting starting there uh, is, is, is the task in and of itself, but, you know, what can people do to like, you know, open up more corner stores? You know, I mean, we, we're spending money. Uh, we're spending money buying chargers and everything from everybody else. <laughs> right. Um, that, that's an interesting question. Um, and interestingly enough, um, uh, brother across the street, um, brother JR, you know what I'm saying? JR's um, convenience store. So, it's a mini mart, so it, there's a convenient, there's a there's a corner store across the street. So, as soon as I, you know, came around, I came over to them and told them what I told them what my mission was, and I said I'm gonna make it a point to make sure that I'm not selling anything that you're selling, for so it'll be like a no competition and where my mission is, and also, this may sound contradictory, but I need that because it shows for one black a black ownership across the street, two black owned corner stores that aren't in competition with each other because they're selling virtually 90% different products. Yeah, I might yeah. have toilet paper and he will have toilet paper. But like all right, the juices I would have here, the smoothies he would have, the natural sodas I would have, I wouldn't have any of those products as a model, as a business model. Now also, what is necessary in business is for all the people that come in, let me get an hour later. I don't got that. You got to go across the street. I'm not here to tell you to stop doing anything. Uh -huh. So my mission, like my approach is, was very brash for years and I've polished it to a point where um, it's digestible. So my mission hasn't altered or changed, but it's like, all right, I, I know where, where my hot spots are, where I can hit my shots and, and be effective for everybody for everybody to win more important. So with that being said, there's a lot of products that people are gonna be looking for that I'm not gonna have because I'm not selling them. And so <laughs> go right, blow, right. blow about them across the street. I don't, you know, right. we got this, they got that. And, right. we, but we do have this, you know what I'm saying? If you're interested in that, you know what I'm saying? And that's fine, you know what I'm saying? So I know that my target market initially isn't going to be necessarily the, the surrounding neighborhood. Um, yeah. certain price points for certain products but you know that's why it's going to be opportunities for educations we're going to do community nights where we're going to be you know, you know walking people through what to do with a produce box when they get it um, yeah. make sense out of everything that we do not to say hey I'm just out here giving out food for the community there's no knock on anybody or anything that's doing that but my focus is health and nutrition so that's why I make sure that I give out produce and fruits and vegetables I'm not with the dairy or the, any other products giving them away to the people because to me if there's, if there's something that can be tremendously harmful you in that product harmful for you in that product 
I'm counterproductive with my mission at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I look at milk just like I look at, like, you know, cocaine or, or crack. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at dairy in black neighborhoods. So I'm an advocate to get that, you know, for you to... If you do it, if you do it, you do it. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be pushing. You're not getting it from me. Right. You know what I mean? yeah. So that's got right. to be more green mission in that aspect of it. And it's not a wrong or right or wrong spectrum because it's not right or wrong because that's a spectrum for the individual. I don't deal with what's right or wrong or what's good or bad. I, your car requires oil and gasoline to move. Your body requires water and nutrients. So even, sure. re, even redefining foods like, um, um, uh, guys I work with, um, alkaline bodies, they break down what, <clears throat> what food is, like 14, like air is food, water is food, you know what I'm saying, people don't look at sunlight is food, but like, so showing us, showing every, the youth that we're more plant-like than we are anything else, you know what I'm saying, we're like walking plant, and even though our bodies can digest other things, what does our body require to say something is healthy or healthy? is healthy or not because right. a lot of things that are getting sold as healthy are just healthier than the trash that you is healthier than trash you know what <laughs> right, I'm saying? right 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 but it's like all right is it healthy is the question so we got to talk about nutrients that you know biomolecular structures of the cells and the science of it like break down to the science if we want kids to have better computers and and educational resources and we're fighting for all of these other injuries injustices that we've you know what I'm saying, having been able to overcome, that's a piece of it too. Like, what are we sending our kids to school with in their bodies to be able to filter in what's going to come into their minds? You know what I'm saying? That's a real thing to think about. It's not knocking what, what mama and them is cooking and what we've done for years. But I, I, I had some fights. Like, well, I, I, will, I will say this because I think this will be real interesting. The first week I taught high school agriculture, two days in, Youth came up to me and said, uh, Mr. Nell, like, I understand everything that you're saying. He said, and so I just got one question for you. I said, what? He said, so what? I can't start eating healthy until I'm 18. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm 16 now. And, you know, I live, I still live with my mother. And he was like, um, he was like, I still live with my mother. And um, and I told her what you said. And she was like, well, yeah, Mr. Farmer, no, he don't buy the groceries or he don't know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and so I, I was normally I have like a quick witty response and I was I was challenged by that I said okay wow well, all right so that's when I started doing the mission in the schools by bringing right. them, showing them what to do now and more importantly with here at the store I want to hold sessions for parents so they can see how it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to be healthy it can actually be more cost effective and what to do with certain foods to make it fun and taste good because yeah. if you eat steak or chicken alone like without putting something herbal or plant-based or, or olive oil something with vinegar it's it has no pretty much taste to me yeah. my right no, you're right no yeah and, the, and the, the, the the beautiful thing about it is and, and, and if you're just tuning in guys it's the show about tomorrow you're watching uh easy jackson here with Dermel brunson and our guest today farmer nell dominic nell uh be more green city weeds and I uh, want to give a shout out to our sponsors and our folks that support us, our executive producer, Brian Greenspan Dawkins and from Baltimore with Love, Black Arts District, Leaders of Tomorrow Youth Center, Afro, WEAA uh, 88.9, the Morgan Family School of Urban Social Work over there. Shout out to Mr. Richard Norman. One of the things we started doing easy in Nell with LTYC maybe three or four years ago with our arts programs, because everything our focus has been utilizing the performing and creative arts to impact education, academic success, social and interpersonal skill building, uh, team building opportunities. And we started to add arts that made sense for job trajectory as well as health. And we added culinary arts. And so for the last three or four years, we've been moving the culinary arts pieces in our programming to ensure that young people get that piece that you mentioned in your life now when you were a kid, having to read the back of stuff to make sure they didn't have nuts and milk and things of that nature, just making sure that kids get introduced to label reading, to 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 reading the, the labels on what it is that they're buying, not only for the purpose of digesting it, but even things that we put on the skin. 
you know, lotions and certain types of deodorants and other things that impact the way our bodies can be functioning at, a, at the most high level. Tell me what you think about, we know that culinary arts, we know that health and nutrition is a part of education at this point. Folks like you offering that to the young people in the community from a, in a standpoint of how they're eating as Elijah Muhammad's book would say, how to, you know, not to live to eat, but how to eat to live. And the, the, the reverse of that, thinking about agriculture, the experience that we had as a nation starting this week last year, when everything started to be shut down because of the pandemic. And for a few months, stores were bare, stores were closed, people couldn't get out. It made a lot of folks start thinking about growing their own food. What's your thoughts about agriculture from that standpoint of teaching young people, not just the health and nutrition side of what they consume, right, but also just from a business model and also just a practical life model on how to survive? Oh, man. Um, it was interesting that you said that because when everything hit last year, um, for those that don't know, I'm you know, a photographer and videographer by trade prior to and still going with the Farmer Nell City Weeds mission. Um, hence, in Nellaware, that's where the name came from. It was given to me that whole, like, when I was down south, like, that whole Nell is aware. You got a different type of awareness. And I'm like, man, I don't think that is, that is me, that it's something special about me. I think that it's just the things that I lacked growing up actually benefited me later in life. You know what I mean? Like I didn't put those things in my body um, at all or as much as others and, you know, was able to see the difference later and the difference ended up being a benefit to to some people. Um, um, what was the what was the baseline of that, of the question? Ag the agriculture piece of it. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, last year, oh my God, oh so yeah, last year, um, that's when like the whole capitalization, like, oh, well now the farmer no thing kicked in because now it's important to people like, oh, how do we eat or food giveaways were hit different with people. You know what I'm saying? Um, farm consultations hit different city weeds products, you know, hit different. Um, now what I, my message to the youth, like ongoing prior to that hit was that if you learn how to grow microgreens or you learn how to grow kale or a tomato, you can grow anything. So Be More Green is the mission, City Weeds is the business. So City Weeds is still defining itself. You know what I'm saying? City Weeds could be anything. Be More Green, you see what it is and what it's building to be. That's a, a, a product of City Weeds. City Weeds overarching, you know, who knows what we would grow or sell. So teaching the youth that, like, all right, we have like, you know, close to 20 states where you're operating in on the medical recreational marijuana. You know what I'm saying? If we just want to talk about that, someone has to grow that. They've iced us out. Less than one percent of people of color have ownership in the metal uh, in the marijuana industry, which is booming just like Bitcoin. Um, that, that's that's one selling point. I go because that's new. That's right there in their face. They can see that. They can see the value of that. Someone has to grow that. Like I right, grow microgreens is growing. That you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. you could be the pound of kale, man. You could be the, you know what I'm saying? Have blocks of of the of of the kale. Block blocks of the arugula or you know, get seeds of tomatoes from Italy and and just grow nothing but tomatoes and basil and make hood West Side. Um, Tomato sauce, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, sell, and dimes of the tomato sauce at a premium. Right. We only, we only, we only gross, uh, we only produce 600 uh, bottles a year. So, and now it's fifty dollars a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Something like that, like premium up, like what you can own the block. Don't put a farm on there. Build something on there. You know what I'm saying? Put a garden on there. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not just. Yeah, okay, when the time's like, okay, COVID hit and, 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 and now we're quarantined and we're in the house, boom, microgreen kick. When you redefine what food is, you know what your body requires. So it's not like, oh, I steak and potatoes and some broccoli on the side and that's a meal. That's what food is. No, food is like, all right, what's going to keep me alive for this period of time? I can't get to the uh, 
to the um to the grocery store or wherever I miss the food giveaway, how do I feed myself? Okay, microgreens mm-hmm. take a week to grow. So in a week you can feed your family nutrients. Will you yeah. be um it's not about being full, you'll have energy. You understand what I'm saying? You'll yeah. be able to do more, you'll be able to think differently where you're not thinking about like, oh, I'm not full off of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're like, wow, like I never felt like this before. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So and then experiencing that, like, you know, uh, experiencing the ginger and, and, the, and the juices and things of that nature from how people um, experience other products, you know what I'm saying, um, that, they, that they promote so much. So, um, so moving forward that we will be prepared for anything that possibly occurs like this again, or more prepared than we were before. So people aren't scrambling around, they would be, food bank systems where people know they can get food from <clears throat> because they've donated to it. Yeah. You've donated to it. Yeah. So okay, two months out of the year, you might not be, you know, on point. You go back to the, you know, to the to the pot. And then each one to each one, like this is this is something that can go on up and down North Avenue. I'm just here on North of Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So tap, tapping into copping is, is important. But then we got Penn North. You know what I'm saying? We got all the way, you know what I'm saying, and all the little streets in between that what are we gonna do with this? Or, you know, we go up Pulaski towards Mondama. There's, you know, two, three vacant corner stores right up the street on Pulaski. There's yeah. two vacant buildings right next to this building. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what are we gonna do? You know what I mean? It's kind of putting out the call to action um, because in me getting tired, this is the load and the mission that I asked for. So there's, there's no complaints. There's no excuses, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why did tech say, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's more so just, you know, getting to the grassroots of things. Like, city weeds is what the city needs. I really do acknowledge that. It's beyond me believing that. It's beyond me pumping myself up. It's beyond me marketing the brand. It's like, and then city weeds can be defined as anything. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's giving that opening door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this easy because, you know, thinking about what you're saying, Dominic, and the importance. I love how you said, like, there could be ver- versions of a be more green, especially I'm always thinking urban. I'm always thinking inner city because that was what I experienced as a young man growing up in the inner city, what that felt like, what that looked like, thinking about if there were be more greens on corners throughout Baltimore City, east, west north and south, right, in, in, in communities. And that was the movement, what that would look like. But also thinking bigger, when you say big brand, when you mention things like 7-Eleven or McDonald's, things that we all have had experience, you know, in our life being introduced to. And, yo, know, I've been dealing with this thing this week easy about cancel culture, right? Because I'm so tired of the cancel culture. They, about to cancel Dr. Seuss this week because of this, because of these, you know, subtle jabs that were being inserted into uh, the books as it relates to how folks, you know, communicated about different races, you know, black people had black skin, you know, Asians, it's calling them the yellow man, Native Americans, the red man, and this so forth and so on. And how quick people have been this week to evaluate and, and, and instigate uh, something from a man who's passed away since 1991. Uh, right. Dr. Seuss has been gone off the earth, uh, came up in a different time. You, Easy, as a founder of Epic Fam, uh, you know, the, the new company you're building in the city. Dominic, you're building your brands, both as an artist, as an artistic eye with, with the camera, but also now with agriculture. And what do you guys think about there being more you know, intentional pressure on folks in the community to be careful about what they represent. Give me an example. We've had often in our community see athletes, actors, big time important people on the McDonald's commercial, on the Sprite commercial, on the whatever, you know, yeah. back in the day, joke, the, the camel cigarette. At anything that we've seen, so many Coca Cola, all of the think about all the mega black stars that Pepsi and Coca Cola sponsored, they get those checks 
We don't know what they do with those checks. It's none of our business what they do with those checks. But I'm wondering, connecting it to the mission of healthy bodies, healthy hearts, clean minds. What if, tell, y'all, y'all see what I'm thinking? Like, why, why yeah. would we put that kind of pressure on our people to not be brand ambassadors for stuff that kill our people? You know, we well, love, I mean, I mean, think we, about, I, I mean, love, gotta... I love, I love Billy D. Williams, but he was the oh, Coke 45. 45 man. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we ain't cancel culture that. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things you always got to acknowledge and, 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 and look at is the fact that corporate, corporate America is very aware of how much human beings enjoy pleasure. And, and humans, we just, we do not give up our pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, you know what I mean? Everybody has these pleasures. You know, I, I, I think about, you know, Nell was talking about the dairy thing. I'm lactose intolerant. And I talk to people who are also lactose intolerant. And they will still eat ice cream and drink milkshakes and eat macaroni and cheese. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'll just pay the consequences later. And it's such a... <laughs> It's an insane way of thinking to me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm just like, this this thing does this terrible thing to my body. I'm not going to do that. But on the flip side, I'm a smoker. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's always something that, that we will hold on to because of the pleasure, because it feels good to us. And corporate America knows that. So they'll continue to put money into marketing that to us. You know what I'm saying? You know, we know that McDonald's and all that shit, is, all that stuff is not healthy. Right. But but it feels good to eat it. It smells good. You know what I mean? So so you got a lot of people, you know, what is, what is it? McDonald's makes something like, serves like 6.4 billion people a day or something like that. I'm crazy. Like, like it's that amount of people that are looking at you like, <laughs> You ain't taking my McDonald's away. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> and, right. And it's just an unfortunate truth. You know what I mean? But I think that with cancel culture, I think one of the things, you know, it's, it's, it's like this extreme reaction to something that's actually kind of necessary, right? You have a younger generation of people that are questioning things now. You know what I mean? So you see less of them you know, less of them smoking cigarettes, more of them mixing healthy stuff into their diet more than we did coming up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I just see more younger, younger people thinking about these things. So cancel culture becomes this result of analyzing everything. You know what I mean? Wait, is that right? Should that be, should that be like that? Maybe yeah. we should change that. You know, and I yeah. think that's a natural progression of things. But, you know, of course, there's like trial and error with it. <laughs> I, and I, I just want to hold people accountable before you jump in there now. I just want to hold people accountable the same way we're holding folks accountable to other important issues. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm the one that's not so ready to jump right in and cancel every person for every mistake. Yeah. Uh, be, c consistent behaviors that have not changed after warnings. That's a different dynamic, but yeah. having human error and evolution of understanding, we're so quick now to cancel. It's becoming a fad and trendy to put yeah. energy out on social media, energy out in media about whom should be canceled. And I'm just wondering when we have this conversation about health and nutrition, you know, could we could we send some accountability that way too? What you think now? Absolutely. Um, interesting enough, I'm, I'm gonna lead with fully answering uh, Easy's question from earlier, like you know how to duplicate this model of you know of, uh, brothers buying um you know more property to get corner stores and things of that nature. Um, it literally begins for me. It begins with me. Like I have to get this pop, and this has to look and feel like something that. Um, it's perceived or pumped up or whatever hype or rollover has to be more than that. So I have to get, I have to turn this up. You know what I'm saying? I have to make this lit rather. You know what I'm saying? This has to be lit. This has to be a lit thing where it's like, oh, 
how do I get on in on that? Or I want to do, you know what I'm saying? That's when the um the duplication comes in, the biting, or we'll call it mm. duplication, because this is what I'm giving to the people. This isn't like photos and that's intellectual property where I'm like, hey, I want you to know that, that I did that. This is like, you know, this is be more green. This is, you know, this is this is a mo a movement, you know what I'm saying? This is like, okay, like 7 Eleven, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, that was a movement. McDonald's was a movement, you know what I'm saying? So making it a cool, regular thing, but it has to be a big, th it has to be the coolest thing or the, or the pop in it, or, you know what I'm saying? It, was, it has to be a conversation and an experience and the whole, you know, wow, I didn't know that this was going on down here. You know what I'm saying? Like on the next yeah. block over, Brother Rashid has the, um, the image center with the, um, you know what I'm saying, with the uh, frozen desert. And then so they have a cafe and a smoothie and they have, they make their own clothes there and they sell their own clothes there made in bottom. So that's a $3 million, um, you know what I'm saying, investment. Wow. From, uh, black owned on the next block over was the building that I started Nello Nellaware Photography in. Um, ironically, it was the old Nellaware house, but I was in there with, you know, my godfather, Melvin Williams, AKA Little Melvin. So this is just like, just like almost like some black Wall Street that I say type of, you know, grassroots being planted around here. They were able to get the vacant lots behind there and turn that into a green space for the community. We got two of the vacant lots behind us on Herbert Street that, you know, I'm going to do some, you know, my farm and thing some way, shape or form. So what I want to do is horse therapy with the a rappers have them bring the horses up and um, have the community heal with horse therapy, like come and petting mm -hmm. the horse, just identifying with the animals again, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you had to kill this animal and eat it, would you do it? You know what I'm saying? When you hold a chicken, are you really with chasing it down to kill it, skin it, you know what I mean? Fe defeather it, skin it cut open the parts that, you know what I'm saying? See the parts of what is the gizzards and the giblets and all, like, are you really with that? Because I'm farming out for real. Like I, you know, I had grew up with family that had acres in Pennsylvania, Virginia. I built houses from scratch, got water from a well, you know what I'm saying? Chase chickens, cut fish, cut open the fish, hunted, you know what I'm saying? Bow and arrow, crossbow. Right. And, and what I'm trying to say is like, I'm, I'm affluent in those things. I'm, I don't have the stomach to do all that with the deer and all of that stuff, man. I don't, I, I don't have, I, and I know how to do it. So I'm asking the average person if they really, if, if, if things really went south, how would you feed yourself if you're really predominantly, requ um, uh, predominantly required eat, eating meat and things of that nature? So when, it, when the store goes down and the meat spoils, then what? what you know, what hole are you digging in now? And, you know, now people are going to be, you know, I had to build a big fence because people were going to be like stealing, you know, my apples and, and, and oranges and things of that nature. Um, but the whole the whole essence of it, like with cancel culture, then to segue to that is I have to become lit or else then I'll, I'll be cancel culture of Baltimore. Um, <laughs> to make a segue joke, um, but a real, you know, a real thing that, you know, has to be considered. The thing with cancel culture to me is that people are canceling the individual and not the culture of what built that so i'm not angry with it because it's bringing it to the forefront and right and it's coming from an area that's behind the, i mean in front of us not behind us it's not coming from our past it's coming from our youth so i'm, I'm pleased with that because it shows that their level of awareness is here to change something yeah. and not destroy something they're looking to kind of repair there we say repair or have reparation so that to me that's a yeah. small seed of, of reparation that's how we begin to repair us as the others as being their elders we bring the context to to it you know what i'm saying because their content is raw that it's like okay you know dr seuss he's a racist i mean if they unpeel twizzlers you know they'll go back to nibs they had to change the word nibs they used to be called nigger bits because they were little black pieces of licorice there we company, go. Known as, the, com the company is now known as Twizzlers. So if this, go. Go, if this goes live, then, then tomorrow Twizzlers will be on the ca cancel culture list. So, you know. <laughs> there we go. So we're, we're, and, we're, and, we're that's, and, that's, and that's my and that's my thing, Dominic, is like, it, are we letting it get out of hand? And should we as a black community, as the people in, in this country, uh, you know, that are that are most susceptible to the things that are supposedly connected to cancel culture, right, those injustices, we need to start speaking up about not making it be about 
blaming a person, but blaming the spirit of a thing, the intention of a thing, and, mo and directing it to a progressive ideal and not stepping back by saying this person is responsible and we don't want to deal with this person or we're going to wipe out this person's whole life's work. Make you know create it create you know dynamics for them to not be able to you know still move and earn money for themselves and take care of themselves is getting to a degree where we're focusing on things that are not the root cause but are the effect of something and so I'm just concerned you know when I heard the Dr. Seuss thing this week it concerned me you know that we're not in our community especially in Baltimore Black Americans could we do something more to revert a positivity and a love into identifying and shining a light on a dark spot? Let's do it with love and not vitriol and just totally just wiping some person or some company out of memory, of history. You know, it just, it, it feels weird. You know, we're out, we're out of time today. But, but one, one thing that I wanted to say to you guys before we left is, you know, we want to support City Weeds. We want to support Be More Green. We're thankful for Nell being our guest today. He dropped so many nuggets and jewels. We're yes, going to sir. be reworking this stuff on our social media now to cut up some of this episode, to put it back out there, to post some of the powerful statements you made. As we're leaving off today, just let people know where they can connect with you, your website, your IG, your, 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 your address, all that good stuff. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, if you're on Facebook, I have three pages. It's the City Weeds page, it's the Be More Green page, and it's also the Farmer Nell page. I'm currently working on my website. It is cityweedsbaltimore.com. It's under the construction right now, so it's not um, available as yet. It should be available in April. Um, I also have an app. You, uh, you can go to my Instagram, and it's at Nellaware. That's N-E-L-L-A-W-A-R-E. -E. And that's um, the link in my bio. You can download the City Weeds app and um, keep up with City Weeds with that. That's, that's what's up, man. We thankful to have you today, brother. Uh, the show about tomorrow, today with Dominic Nell, Be More Green, City Weeds founder. Uh, really, you're a missionary because you, you, are, you are taking that modality of the work of the great missionaries uh, that are in history and you're taking a mission and actually putting action to it. And that's what a missionary is. And, it, you know, you are a black, young, black male missionary here in Baltimore. And we're thankful and blessed to have you. Thankful and blessed to have you be in our city and be on our show. And uh, as always, Easy and I, you know, are, are sending love as we close the show out to everybody in the city, everybody across uh, wherever you're watching and listening to this show today. You know, keep taking care of yourself, taking care of each other. Uh, spread love, spread peace and joy. And uh, the show about tomorrow, we always discuss the future of the Black family in Baltimore. Peace. Peace.